Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with another 3D printing video with the Spark Maker. Today we're going to be issuing the build plate and getting a good adhesion and why sometimes warpage occurs. Now what happens is the first layer, the base, the primer, the stand does not quite stick properly to the build plate due to the bed not being completely level with the clear screen. Depending on the resolution you're doing, um, ha half a mil all the way down to 0 0.02 of a mil, you've got less spaces and less likely to make full proper content. And all it has to be is half to a whole micron lifted and it's being stuck to the screen and only a certain part of the build plate to have a small dog here. As you print and more weight is applied, this is going to flex up more and more. Now the advantage of having supports is, the supports are going to be quite messed up. But the model might only sandwich here by a quarter of a mil, half a mil. But it's not going to be mechanically sound. If it's just for appearance or to look good, this is okay and fine to use. But ideally at all times, we want to have as a flat print as humanly possible. And this video is going to show a few tricks how to achieve that without sacrificing the finest possible sliced print in the settings. Another example of a deformed print you can see how it's gone up a bit and actually changed the shape of the model. The first early steps of leveling your bed and getting the perfect print is leveling the bed mechanically, undoing the screws, adding it to the machine, lowering it to the zero level, screwing it up nice and tight, but not over tightening where you thread the screws, just two finger tight. You also give that resin a really good shake or stir so it doesn't separate and has a bad chemical reaction when curing. SD file loaded up. Put everything on supports rather adhered straight to the bed. We'll show an example later. And we push start to play. Gonna let this bad boy submerge into the vat. And then there is a process of it leveling itself up. It's gonna rise a bit and then it's going to hit the exact surface where it's the correct layer distance from the clear film and the sheets. I've got a few uh, implements, tools, the end of a brush or whatever. When we can see the UV, we place into the vat, onto the plate, and we push down a little bit with just your finger force and your wrist force. And you do it to the different corners opposite of the plate. What this is making sure is that the plate is as close, if not too close, to the film and you've got this uh, absolute, even, universal coating of the build plate. It's also important when you're doing the layers and you're putting in the settings, manipulate the settings for the very first layer and the exposure time should be a fair amount of time so it's nice and cured flat on the plate with absolutely no dog ears. That way, we've got a nice primed surface and we're absolutely ready to go. At the moment, this is the indication that the UV lamp is on and we're still baking on the first layer. Once the UV goes off, the plate goes up and down, readjusting it to do the next layer. We push the button for a blue color and the bed is actually going to come out as it's paused readjusting and now it should be pulling out ever so slowly at the slowest lift speed there you go you can see the plate just popping out and this way you can inspect your build or your print I do not recommend doing this mid print as a reposition and it doesn't go exactly back into that how it originally went in you're going to get an obvious line or the slightest amount of distortion around the supports and the first layer. Distortion doesn't matter. You're going to cut it off. You're going to throw it out. But for the first layer, we're going to see if it's properly adhered to. 
All the excess resin has been pushed back into the tank using a Q-tip and the remnants mopped up with a tissue and alcohol. And this is our very first layer and this is exactly what we want to achieve. Everything is adhered. To do a test, we want to slide the blade underneath the four corners and you want it to not be able to slide in whatsoever. Chuck that bad boy in. You push the button again to resume the print and she'll just resubmerge into the vat. Pro tip if you don't want to clean the top of the plate constantly, when you do your first test only have a micro layer of resin in the bed so you don't have to clean the top off when you do the check then fill up when you put in the second time to complete the print. All is good, we shall leave it to continue finishing the print. This version we're not going to interfere with the build plate and we'll see how much of a risk we're going to bring to ourselves. Here is a problematic print that we just stopped after the first three layers. One or two things can go wrong. This is going to go keep getting extremely high and the print at this end is going to warp or with enough pressure it's going to completely peel off and drop which this one's still stuck so it's going to stay. So we can see that this is the print that lifted and we've got an ideal flat print. The part is the same, the detail is ever so slightly warped and the end of the uh, trailer connector is uh, half its size so it needs to be cut off and scratch built. But with the simple tricks demonstrated we can completely avoid this just by checking the first layer and removing the support well before we get too much of a print. Here is the other side. You can see that the proportions are excellent. Just the very bottom is a slight slope, no raised bits, and these two pieces dwarfed. This is a, another example, and you can see that it just pops right off. So this would have fallen straight into the bed. Here is the entire batch of prints I've done with almost half a litre of resin since applying pressure on the place for the very first layer and doing a scrape test. We cannot see any major warpage or damage for the large pieces and the smaller pieces have very flat bases with a few of these tips and tricks, we can guarantee complete success with all small prints. And if there are any problems, the ability to bought with the absolute minimal wastage of material and early foresight of pausing a print, let's do an experiment of a more ambitious and larger print that consumes over 50 hour time, a lot of material and the complete Z axis length of the printer. I did the usual method of doing a check on the build plate and hardening the resin further with a UV light. This made it inflexible and brittle. The material did not like to stick at it as much as well as a bit of shrinking and issues with the build plate. What I've also found is I bought another color of resin in larger quantity as the resin I've had a lot of success with has sold out. Even though it is the same brand, each pigment colour has different densities, chemical formulations and they react differently outside of the brand of 3D printer that you have. I am going for the cheapest at the moment. This orange that I'm attempting to print this spaceship with is not reacting well and does not stick to the aluminium build plate. I'm going to try a new method of utilizing the very little resin I do have that reacts very well to my build plate and then mixing in orange as I go to utilize most of that bad resin that I do not like very much. Close to 24 hours into the print and it's looking absolutely amazing. Quite pleased, quite happy how it is turning out. Now, the first one, uh, within a few layers, did fail. It seems that this orange resin has gone bad or does not react well with 
UV lights under 50 watts, standard resin, done quite a bit of uh, reading up into it. Decided to fill a few mil of the vat with the skin tan resin I've already had, uh, very little, and it prints very well. Just did the rafts and then started mixing in the uh, orange resin. Uh, resin generally cross-contaminates quite well and continually uh, topped up until I got to this level. Uh, obviously the orange resin is good enough to take form and stick on resin. It just does not like for the spark maker the aluminium build plate. We'll uh, top it up further and have a look at it in another 24 hours. It is a 450 hour print after all. Absolutely amazing. Completely finished and the resolution that we want. There we go. The biggest print I've done. I almost the longest model possible. And you can see that the first layer, the base, is the skin resin, which uh, performs very well for me. And it's on there tight. And as we pan up, it's slowly morphing into the orange, which isn't working well for me. But it still did a good print. So there we go. All the tips for getting everything to stick onto the build plate. Thank you very much for watching as always. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. And we'll keep up this series. Catch you guys later.